Welcome to the Grid 0.2 release party, part of the uh, one of the major Hyperledger projects dedicated to supply chain solutions built on a distributed ledger. My name is Jack Vishnesky. Um, I'm part of the Grid team leading our community development. And for the next 42 minutes, um, I and other members of the Grid team will be hosting you on this release party. Very simple agenda for the next 42 minutes. Um, once I'm done with this little intro, I will turn it over to David Checky, one of the key sponsors and thought leaders for the GRID project. He's going to briefly explain the vision and the philosophy uh, behind the overall digital supply chain platform and the Hyperledger GRID project specifically. Once he's done with that, uh, we're going to give the lion's share of the time for this 40 minute session to uh, Shannon T. Lander and myself and we're going to be uh, doing a demo of the features that we've released as part of grid 0.2 right before i turn it over to david checky um, i just want to note as a reminder that this is a public meeting by which i mean it is not affiliated with uh, any specific company or business so uh, we will not be discussing uh, you know business interests during this session this session is focused on the hyperledger grid project an open source project for uh, building integrated supply chain solutions on a distributed ledger that will be the focus of our time today we're really glad that you all have uh, taken some time out of your days to join and with that david checky the floor is yours Thanks, Jack. Great, uh, great kickoff and awesome uh, music selections to ease us into what is truly a great milestone for the team and community uh, working on grid. Couldn't be happier to be here to talk to this entire audience about where we're at with grid, the 0 0.2 release, and to get into a demo. Uh, let's just talk briefly. I know what Jack even said brief on the slide here. I will say, I'm uh, like personally, I'm very excited about what we're doing with Grid, and I could talk at length about it. And uh, I will do my best to keep it brief. Again, I'm Dave Checky. Uh, I really try to guide the the vision and strategy for uh, Grid as a product and evolution, but that is a community effort, and it is uh, we're going to talk about how it's open, open source, uh, open governance, and open standards as we get into this a little bit. Uh, I think Jack is driving here. I'm going to have him. Go ahead and right on advance right so uh just to set the stage a little bit really seeking to integrate our supply chains in digital ways uh, looking at technology as an enabler to establish more effective supply chain connectivity is something that many many organizations are doing and many uh software products are seeking to to help enable. This is a vision that I think is widely recognized and has been for some time as super opportunistic. Uh, with Hyperledger Grid, we're really seeking to do that in deliberate ways, taking advantage of uh, modern technology and modern uh, modern platforms. Uh, we'll go ahead to the next next slide as well. I want to set the stage a little bit more that this is a Hyperledger project. Uh, for those of you not familiar with Hyperledger, Hyperledger is a Linux Foundation uh, uh, project, uh, umbrella project, that is a great home, uh, both uh, in this picture metaphorically, but also uh, as a community uh, for enterprise centric and or uh, just general blockchain or distributed ledger based solutions. Uh, Hyperledger Grid, you can see in this picture, uh, is aligned with a doma domain-specific capabilities, in particular around enabling supply chain uh, integration in this uh, in this family. Uh, so a, a little bit more background on Grid than on the next slide here. That's setting the stage. It's part of Hyperledger and the Hyperledger Foundation. So really, what is Grid? Grid is a platform for building supply chain solutions. Uh, many of us talk a lot about the value of common process data and technology. Aligning those types of uh, anchoring values across supply chains 
can drive meaningful efficiencies, value, and business outcomes. Uh, different trading partners working with different data or working in different ways with different processes or using different types of technologies uh, are the reality of our supply chains every day. And they create friction and unnecessary uh, effort and costs. Uh, doing things like reconciling uh, invoices or, or uh, keeping aligned data about the products that we are exchanging in a supply chain uh, are just exa common examples of the types of custom integration uh, that we put up with in our in our supply chains in order to just operate and execute internally in many organizations we've sought to optimize but we don't talk a lot about how to optimize process data and technology across our industries hyperledger grid seeks to provide a platform and a framework for implementing common process data and technology solutions across supply chains We've anchored Hyperledger Grid to existing industry standards. So we're not reinventing process data and technology. We are, uh, we are evolving and we are implementing uh, in new ways. So uh, as an example of that is what we're seeing today with 0.2's release is about establishing some common core data concepts, in particular product data. Product data has a uh, very well managed and governed set of standards, in particular uh, with GS1. Uh, GS1 and G10 and serializable G10s and other dimensions of product data exist in our industries and, uh, and are uh, obvious ways that we could start to seek alignment for uh, collaboratively sharing and managing those important data assets. Other examples include GS1 standards like GLN, how we define locations uh, in our supply chains. Really building out these uh, core concepts, location, product, customer, kind of the essence of most business transactions. So we anchor those things to industry standards. In addition, Hyperledger Grid, of course, being a Hyperledger, provides open source flexibility. This is not a, a, a vendor solution. This is an open source project that is uh, it is driven by the community. Uh, the team that's here has worked uh, across organizations to deliver 0.2 uh, and has uh, been a great collaborative community effort. And we welcome other contributions, be they, be they uh, subject matter expertise, ideas, or uh, technical contributions as well. Fundamentally, we just see, we see GRID as open standards, open governance, open source, uh, implementations of common process data and technology. It's a really, really powerful set of capabilities. All right, let's talk about the roadmap quickly and then we'll get into the demo. So where are we at? Our short-term focus is really anchored on, like I talked about those uh, big nouns, pricing, I'm sorry, pricing data, location data, product data, some core workflow capabilities, and we're already building purchasing and purchase order capabilities. Uh, you can see in that first bullet on the left side in the core that we're working, that we just released 0 0.2, that's why we're here in July, and that we are already underway on 0 0.3, uh, focusing on purchasing. Looking out, you can imagine where we're going with the roadmap, but we also spelled more of it out here. Things about Thinking about quality specification. How do we collaborate more effectively on our product specifications in a supply chain? How do we resolve disputes more effectively and efficiently across parties? How do we handle invoicing and payment or evolve into more supplier managed purchasing or customer uh, driven forecasting solutions? Getting into product catalogs and bill of lading. These are things that we in a supply chain uh, collaborate on all the time today. We just think there are more effective digital ways to do this, really driving a uh, virtually vertically integrated orientation. Longer term features like integrated forecasting and planning, uh, really digging deeper into uh, traceability and uh, product journey is uh, are all things that we think and talk a lot about. We're really tying the 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 features uh, to what we see users of this environment getting value out of. Uh, it's not necessarily 
purely aspirational, it's practical uh, in the features that we're building. So uh, again, today we're here to celebrate, to learn more, and to talk about the GRID 0.2 release. And with that uh, in particular about how we're managing product, let's get to the demo. Right on. You, Jeff. You. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, are you able to hear me? Testing. Yes, just yes, yes, indeed. OK, cool. thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. So for this next section, which is going to take the rest of the time, um, Shannon T. Lander is joining me to uh, do this demo. Shannon, are you able to share your screen? Yes, I certainly can. No, thank you. Folks, Shannon is uh, also a key member of our team, engineer extraordinaire, manages project as well. Thank you, Shannon. I can see your screen. Um, if uh, if you can see Shannon's screen, please either say yes in the chat window, thumbs up emoji, you know, whatever, uh, whatever your speed is. All right, I'm getting some yeses, getting some thumbs up. Cool, we're going to go. So what are you looking at? We thought the, the best and most effective way to uh, demo the grid 0.2 features was actually to simulate, you know, how they might work in concert for um, you know, a real use case. And so the way we're going to play this out is uh, you've got two organizations, Alpha and Beta. Shannon is playing the part of Alpha. Alpha is the orange box in the top right. That will represent where Alpha is interacting uh, on grid and making commands. Alpha is a supplier. Alpha supplies many different types of products, including absolutely delicious steaks with lots of marbling to many different customers. One of those customers is Beta, and uh, I will be playing the Beta organization. You can see Beta in the white box in the bottom right. And uh, I'm a customer who I buy delicious steaks and many other things from Alpha. And I also buy lots of products from lots of other suppliers. So. You know why are Alpha and I and I talking here about Grid? Well, uh, you know some of the challenges that I as a as a customer with many different suppliers have had have included, um, first of all, uh, very disparate experiences in having to log into many different supplier portals to interact and engage with those suppliers, up to and including multiple different portals for a single supplier. Um, in addition to that. Uh, it's not just you know how we interact from a portal perspective, but also when it actually comes to the information that we need to exchange to do business, it comes in many different forms, many different manners, and uh, that's proved a challenge as well for me as a customer when it comes to reconciling all these different products that I'm buying across all of these suppliers. And so in this simulation, Shannon is the alpha organization is going to guide me beta through uh, how we can, to start with, level set on the products that we share between each other using uh, the grid and specifically the 0.2 features. So then to help all of us here with seeing that come to life, you'll see in the top left um, is kind of our cheat sheet for the different uh, commands and uh, technical steps that we'll be running through. If you are someone who likes to see, we'll what are, what's the actual you know command line or code that we're running through? It's all there for you to look at as we're going. Um, and then in the bottom left are the specific features that we're going to be demoing in order, so that as we're going through this, you can track where we are in our journey. Our ultimate goal is that I as Beta can see the products that I'm buying from Alpha and. Um, they're able to supply the products and I'm able to make changes to those products to reflect how I want them to look. So with that, we're going to get started. The first thing that Alpha and Beta need to do in order to uh, transact on the grid distributed ledger is set up something called a splinter circuit. Shannon? Yeah, so I am going to propose as the Alpha organization that we create a splinter circuit. And so what this is going to do is this is going to allow our organizations to privately communicate on the splinter network. And if um, in the future we want to add more um, trade partners, uh, we can uh, bring them into this uh, splinter network and create different circuits with those people or with those organizations. But this circuit that we're creating is just private between our two organizations. 
So first off, I, as the Alpha organization, I'm going to propose that we create a splinter circuit. And so now um, it is up to the beta organization. They can see that circuit that I've just proposed for them. And if we go into the Alpha organization, we should also be able to see that same circuit proposal that was submitted. And so now, as the Alpha organization, Jack, would you like to accept my circuit proposal? As the uh, beta organization, I totally accept your proposal awesome. for a circuit. Let's do business. Cool. All right. So now we should be able to see that circuit that we just created from both of our organizations. And so now, uh, now that we have a grid uh, circuit running, we will be able to perform um, grid transactions. Oh, super great. So what types of uh, transactions are we able to perform on the circuit that we have? Yeah, so we can check that out uh, by looking at um, the preloaded smart contracts that grid offers. Um, so I'm just going to uh, quickly um, go into my Splinter service CLI and I'm going to specify the circuit uh, that my alpha organization is running just to tell it uh, exactly which circuit I'm on. And so now I can list all of the contracts that are available on um, that circuit that we just created. So you can see that grid service ID is being used. Um, and so we can see these are all of the uh, smart contracts that are loaded onto our um, circuit. And so we can perform uh, transactions uh, that are defined by these uh, smart contracts. Oh, super great, super great. So if I'm reading this correctly, um, the smart contracts on our private circuit between alpha and beta include location data. Uh, we'll get to Pike later. We can do purchase orders. We can exchange product and schema information. Um, am, I, am I reading that correctly, Shannon? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly right. So the um, schema smart contract um, it enables us to define a reusable uh, and uh, kind of standard uh, product properties um, that we are transacting within Grid. Um, and then product uh, enables us to share that GS1 compatible product data um, in Grid based on um, the GS1 compatible schemas that we create. And then uh, Grid Location offers uh, an ability to share um, location master data between all of the trade partners. Um, purchase order, as you would assume, has um, purchase order specific um, functionality. And then uh, grid pike, uh, the final one, is uh, allows for permissioning across grid. So you can allow certain agents and organizations to do um, specific tasks. Super and great. That, yeah. Awesome. And um, if I, just so I understand before we move on to uh, milestone three, um, as our relationship as alpha and beta organizations evolve, um, we could add additional smart contracts to this circuit and that would be independent of any other circuits we have, either of us with other organizations. Is that correct? Yes, that's exactly right. So grid 0.2 uh, just allows um, these initial smart contracts to be loaded onto any grid circuit, um, but any uh, changes that we want to make or additional smart contracts that we want to add to the circuit can definitely be added in the future. Sweet. Okay. So now that we've created the circuit and we've seen our smart contracts, um, we have two additional pieces of setup to do before we start transacting on product, right? Yes, so now that we have our splinter circuit set up between our organizations, we are going to um, make uh, an organization, um, a grid representation of our organization. So uh, we're going to create a grid pike organization to represent both the alpha organization and the beta organization from our separate um, nodes here. So I'm going to go ahead and once again, notify the my grid instance what circuit uh, we are using. And so this tells it uh, where to create that organization. And so I will create my alpha org. And now I can go into the betas terminal and also create the beta organization.
All right. And then now after I create both of these organizations, um, we are able to view those um, organizations from both of these nodes uh, because we created these organizations on the same circuit. And so if I call grid organization list, I should be able to see yep, both um, the alpha and the beta organization. And then, uh, like I said before, this is um, viewable from both nodes. So both nodes can see the organizations that are created um, in this circuit. Super great, super great. So you just showed us also that from alpha and beta's point of view in these uh, two different command lines that we've got here, orange and white, we're seeing the same uh, state of the data. Exactly. Right on, right on. So now that we've got these organizations, there's one more step, if I remember correctly, before we start transacting. Yes, so now that we have our uh, grid organization set up, uh, we need to um, set the permission so that we can actually uh, perform some grid transactions. And so uh, what I'm going to do, so as the alpha organization, um, since I'm the one uh, creating the products, I'm going to create a role called product owner. And so this will give me the ability to create schemas and products and delete them and update them. Um, basically, uh, pretty inclusive uh, permissions for dealing with uh, products within Grid. And so now I've created that role for my, um, I've created that role for my organization. And we can see now uh, that the product owner role is added for my organization. Um, and now I'm going to assign that role that I just created, product owner, to um, my agent. And so my agent is tied to my public key uh, that I have. So you'll see that it's pulling in um, my alpha agent's um, public key that I have stored. And so now um, this agent is able to perform all of the uh, transactions that are protected by um, these permissions. So uh, specific schema uh, permissions like can create, can update, um, and then certain product permissions like can create, can update, and can delete product. Super great. And and I think the important takeaway here too is that with these Pike roles and these Pike organizations, we can define all sorts of different relationships uh, between participants on a circuit. In this particular case, right, Alpha being the supplier absolutely needs the capability to create products, upload data, about products and perhaps it wouldn't make as much sense in this particular relationship for beta to have the ability to create products um, given that they're buying them but they're not necessarily creating them uh, however right in different relationships with different organizations uh, we can get very granular and specific in honoring the many different and diverse complex relationships between participants in a supply chain so now that we've got you know all the all the infrastructure and our relationships set up within the grid ecosystem, like we're here to we're here to look at some products, right, Shannon? Can you create a product that you sell to me? Yeah, of course. So I'm going to first uh, create the schema for my GS1 product, and so this basically just tells Grid um, the uh, kind of the format of this product that it's expecting. Um, so it validates it. Uh, it validates the product that I create based on that schema that I just submitted. Um, and as you can see, this is a GS1 uh, product that I'm creating. And so now I can go ahead and run that submission. And if I go ahead and list the products, we should be able to see that um, product that I just created. And once again, if we go over to the beta organization, you should also be able to see a product that I just created, Jack. I would love to see it. Um, yeah. Let's see it in the command line. And then is there another way I can look at it too? Yes, of course. There is. So we have a little UI for our product management. And so um, I'm just signed in as an alpha uh, agent. And so what this allows us to do is see all of um, the products that I have um, access to across all of the different circuits um, that I am also a part of. And so I believe if I 
we all right and so we can see that that is the circuit that i created um, just a bit ago and so if i go ahead and switch over to that circuit there we can see my test regulated product name uh product that i just created for you jack is that uh, sweet. Uh, is that what you expected I mean, I definitely am glad to see that there's a product there. Uh, I will say that test regulated product name is not what what beta calls what we buy from alpha. You know, we call it steak. Is there okay. a way that can we update this so that it, it looks like what I'm buying from you? Yeah. So I think if you want to make those updates, I as the alpha organization am go gonna go ahead and give you the permission to run that transaction yourself to make the updates to the product. Okay. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I'd I can just do it myself. That sounds great. Exactly. So I'm going to create an a role called beta product owner um, within my alpha organization. And so we can see that this role only has the can update product permission. So that means that um, an agent with this permission would not be able to create or delete a product. They would not be able to create schemas. Um, they are only able to update a product. And so now that I have created that role within the alpha organization, the beta organization can update the beta agent with that role. And so now I believe you should be able to update that product, Jack. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Ooh. So we're uploading some fresh XML here. Let's see if that actually caused. All right, I think that was just a little bit of an error from the uh, response, but I think that we should be able to see our stake. So here is the updated product. Jack? I am looking. Ah, yeah, that's right. That's what's up. <laughs> that that's what I buy. That makes a lot of sense. All right. Yeah. I think we just got a little bit of an invalid uh, response there from uh, the Splinter Daemon. It looks like, but uh, the transaction went through, and I can tell that because I just looked at my logs, um, and I can see that the uh, Grid Daemon inserted one product, which means that product was in fact updated. Perfect. So. Just a little issue there with the response, but there you go. You see that you now have uh, specified what exactly this product is and the image. Right on. So, folks, that was that was the whole demo. To recap, real quick, we just showed um, six different you know features within Grid 0.2. We created that splinter circuit. Um, we looked at the smart contracts that we had available within it. We uh, set up our organizations within that circuit and defined what each of us was going to be able to do to reflect our relationship as alpha and beta. We created a product whose data aligned with open and industry standards that were enforced on entry into the system. And then uh, we gave the customer, in this case, the ability to update the data around that product to better reflect uh, what was meaningful information for the customer. Um, so a couple takeaways that I, I want to add from this demo for you all to think about. One, even with the capabilities in Grid 0 0.2, it's 0 0.2. It's early days, right? We have a long journey ahead of us, as you as you saw with the roadmap. But there's already a lot of power here to honor and represent the complex and individual relationships of participants throughout the supply chain, from origination all the way to uh, consumer facing, whether retail or, or what have you. Um, second of all, what we did here with creating and updating some product data Imagine extending that to other activities within the supply chain. Take purchase order for an example. What if I, as the beta organization, want to delegate to my suppliers to log purchase orders on my behalf to cut out cost and complexity and how I do business with them? That's possible with uh, these feature sets that you saw here. Third, the way that you saw the technology actually working, right? Most of it was in the command line. Um, we also very briefly demoed a uh, simple user interface for Grid. What I want to emphasize is that uh, the way that we're building this platform 
it is open and flexible for multiple ways for organizations to use and participate in this ecosystem. What do I mean by that? Well, the uh, command line demonstration that we were showing, you know, you don't need a user interface if you're engaged in fully automated or autonomous transactions between businesses um, or organizations. We hypothesize that there's many cases where uh, the grid ecosystem could be used to actually automate portions of relationships between supply chain participants. Um, and in that case, you don't need a user interface. In circumstances where you do, like we demoed, we do have a simple one that A, uh, makes it easy for you know, a, a supply chain planner or what have you, right, to navigate not just from one specific relationship of a supplier, but actually from all of the different circuits that might be active in an organization. Um, and also to within each of those circuits see what are all the different smart contracts, things that I can do, what is the state of my relationship with this other person in the supply chain. Third, we aren't limited, <clears throat> excuse me, to that specific user interface. As uh, Checky noted in the chat, um, there are many circumstances and we imagine that many of the early adopters especially will be more interested in actually integrating uh, the grid distributed ledger with existing interfaces that they have through ERP systems and other data management systems that are already being used in their organization. And that's absolutely possible as well. So, you know, to put it very simply, right, the uh, grid distributed ledger can meet organizations where they are. With that, that's all we had to demo. We have 10 minutes uh, left here in this release party, and we're gonna open it up for if anyone has questions or comments. We have multiple members of the GRID project team here to uh, take your questions. There is no such thing as a dumb question. Wherever you're coming, whatever walk of life, uh, we're happy to respond. If you want to unmute yourself and raise a question, go for it. If you want to type it in the chat window, I will uh, look at that and moderate those as well. The floor is open. Thank you, Jack. Uh, Ananda here, awesome demo. If somebody want to onboard on the technical side of contributing to this grid, what is the scripting language the person should know or, or what technical details the person should know um, to contribute? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question and I know the like the I think the whole engineering team from the community is probably on the call. Uh, I think like there's a couple ways to just get involved quickly and Hyperledger has public chat rooms. They're rocket chat based rooms that uh, are a great way to reach out and learn more about specifically about the technology. Uh, Grid itself uh, is written primarily in Rust. Uh, if you're looking to do core code contributions, uh, a lot of it is uh, the, the smart contracts are written in Rust. Uh, but there is also uh, plenty of other things that can be uh, engineered around Grid, in particular the integration layer uh, and some other things that you know would benefit from other types of skill sets as well. Uh, so again, like reaching out and engaging with the, the engineering community, or the, the team that's building uh, the code side of uh, GRID, uh, through that Rocket Chat channel is a great way to start. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. It's a really cool demo that showcases uh, this uh, distributed collaborative management of product data. As I talked about in the beginning, that same pattern of collaborating and working together and transacting, really submitting transactions, updating a product, but that same transaction could be things like, uh, you know, issuing a purchase order or uh, collaborating on a dispute or, uh, you know, even other more transformative things. We can imagine shared views of inventory uh, shared views of plans and forecasts and collaborating in really more effective digital ways across supply chains. Then turning Speaking some of that of into, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yep. Sorry to interrupt you, David, but we do have a question in the chat. I'll read it out. Yeah. Uh, 
it's coming from Riju. How does the grid integrate with existing ERP and uh, master data management systems in, for example, uh, the Cargill ecosystem with regards to purchase orders in ERPs and product master data and product syndication tools? Yeah, great question. Uh, grid offers a, a set of event driven uh, capabilities. So when things change in grid, uh, it can publish events so that organizations that are running grid can capture those events in like a pub sub type way, for example, uh, and uh, distribute them. Grid is also like, of course, fully API enabled. Uh, and there's a lot of different ways to uh, integrate to and from that. Lastly, we are working on uh, an integration framework called Griddle that will further ease uh, enterprise integration scenarios between like the trend, the business transactions and processes that are running on Grid and the back office systems that businesses run today. So a lot of capabilities, again, grounded in very uh, pra practical implications for running these types of distributed solutions in, in a modern enterprise. Sweet. Next question is coming from Eric, who said, asks, uh, what would you say is the main difference is with uh, Fabric, another Hyperledger project, for example, which is already used in supply chain applications? Yeah, I, I want to talk about like why why grid is uh, like what we see is great about grid, uh, comparing and cont contrasting with other uh, solutions. Uh, maybe a different conversation. I'd point out that uh, grid is a uh, open source uh, implementation of supply chain capabilities. Uh, I'll clarify that fabric for those on the phone that don't know, uh, fabric is a distributed ledger. Uh, on this demo, we used a distributed application platform named Splinter. Uh, Grid itself is a like more of a business application, not not just a infrastructure thing like Splinter or Fabric is. Grid is a business application that provides supply chain capabilities in open ways based on open standards, open governance, community driven, and free and open source uh, principles. Uh, and you know, that stands in contrast to an entire industry full of vendor driven solutions that are commercially licensed and so on and so forth. So we really think it's important when we're building grid that it maintains that open collaborative community driven orientation. And this is Burn Moorhead. I'm also I have a good opportunity get a uh, good chance to work with Dave and, and Jack. And I would just add on the uh the grid on the first question on the earlier question from um from Riju on the integration with existing ERPs um this is true for cargo this is true for other and other companies as well the key place to think of where the um of where splinter of where uh grid lives is between companies and so the opportunity to connect these uh the the um, the in-house back-end systems inside uh, a distributor or a producer and a per and a, and a customer is to is to remember that this uh, grid is a form of glue. It's a form of interaction. It's a form of achieving agreement um, through processes between these companies. That's really the key. The between these companies is is the application where we see the most use, um, and also. And that's just to build on what they were saying. And also on the question of um, being open, open source, what this means in practical terms, who care, you know, who, who, um, what does this mean in practical terms? This means that when two partners are working together, uh, one of those partners can turn and say to all of their other suppliers, here's a great piece of software. Uh, there's no one charging you at the door. Find your best party to work with implementing this, including your own developers. And uh, you can also be working with us. That's really the, the scalability, the ability to, uh, to, to provide 
our sector a way to drive forward is incredibly valuable and incredibly exciting to see. So uh, thanks for thanks for letting me jump in there, guys. Right on, right on. And with that, I think we're going to conclude the release party here. Um, I want to thank you all for taking time out of your busy days to attend, to uh, get a little taste, a little show not tell about uh, where Grid is in its journey with 0 0.2. Again, uh, if you'd like to learn more, um, I'm pasting into the chat window the uh, Hyperledger Grid website, which includes the detailed uh, roadmap and uh, feature releases for 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and what's coming in 0 0.3. It also includes uh, a glossary of terms for those of you who are maybe newer to this space, whether it's to how do supply chains work, how does a distributed ledger work. And finally, it has uh, a links to our community spaces. We have a rocket chat with uh, direct access to the main project team in case you want to ask any questions about how the platform is built. Um, and that's also the best way to uh, to you know ask any other questions related to um, you know how do you want like learning more about actually using or testing out the platform uh, within your space or organization. So with that, again, thank you everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Be well, be safe, take care of yourself and those around you. Thank you. <laughs>